Welcome to the channel friends. So today's video is going to be a long awaited video that I've been wanting to make and that is the custom stealth snorkel system for the XP1000 and 850 premium trail. So as you can see here, one machine is already done. I went ahead and did it first on the 850 and today I'm going to go ahead and finish up and do the whole thing once again on my XP1000. This machine here is a 2020. My XP1000 is a 2018. This is my girlfriend's 2020 850 premium trail. Now this machine here, as well as that one there, so basically anything 2017 and up, uh, this is gonna apply to. So your 850s and your 1000s. I'm not sure about the 570s. They're probably slightly different, uh, but they're very similar in certain ways. Uh, but this snorkel system here, what I'm going to be showing you today and illustrating to you guys is based on your 850s and your 1000s. This is going to going to fit your 2017 and up. So let's get into it and show you what I did. As you can see here, it's a stealth snorkel system. So once I put the body panels back on, you will not see this at all. There's not going to be these big ugly tubes sticking out the front and blocking your headlight and blocking access to your storage compartment out front. I wanted to retain all the factory features and make it look stock while still having an enhanced snorkel system. So moving along, some of you guys may know this about the Polaris 850s and 1000s is that the exhaust on the PVT transmission or belt drive is mounted somewhat low. So it comes out this side here and kind of exits the back and it's just above the rear tires. So what that means is when you get into water and mud, mainly water that's going to be over the tires, you are in the danger zone of flooding the housing and taking on water. And when that happens, uh, your wheels do not move. It's happened to me three times already. Um, my girlfriend hasn't had it happen to her because because she doesn't get really into the heavy, crazy stuff like I do. Uh, but I'm going to equip both of our machines with a stealth snorkel system that's going to basically relocate the, the intake and the exhaust all the way up here below the headlight. Now, <clears throat> that's going to be sufficient enough for the riding we do. I never see myself getting over the seat in water. I just And another thing... Most likely, if we do get in water that deep, the back end of the machine is what sinks down first. Uh, the top or the front end of the machine is going to be above water and it's always kind of pitched upward. So, allowing the vents to be up here in the front is a really good thing. You could actually be in water over three feet tall or deep and still be fine. As long as the engine's running, as you can see here, I put some snorkels with the SYA warrior plate and I extended it out a little bit further out uh, just so I can get an extended reach like I said to the front of the machine because that allows um, for better snorkel ability uh, like I said the back end of the machine will sink first so the main objective is to remove the snorkel from the rear and the intake which the factory one comes out right about here for the intake, the fresh air intake, and move everything forward like I did here, as you can see. Really clean install, really happy with the way it looks and the way it functions. Very minor trimming I had to do to the plastics to sneak in the tubes, that way that they don't kink or pinch. So, as you can see here, it's a very professional install. I wanted it to look factory, and I wanted it to be professional looking, and easy access if I have to clean it out or disassemble it or if I, if I have to get into anything else on the machine. So I tried to make this whole system with the minimum amount of connections. Very important. Okay. The more connections you put, the more chances you have of stuff leaking and coming apart, coming loose down the road. So I tried to do everything with the minimal amount of connections as you can see here. So there's the intake. I will go ahead and illustrate for you guys what I use for parts in the workshop 
and I'll lay it out on the bench and better kind of show you what I'm using and how I'm doing things. So basically the same thing for the back here, as you can see, I have a coupler, silicone coupler going into some inch and a half vacuum tube. Uh, and then I have a special coupling that attaches to the coupler, as you can see there, which I will explain. Uh, and then I went ahead and siliconed each connection. So I only have one silicone seal on the exhaust and intake, and then one piece tube running all the way up to the top. So this is somewhat of a time consuming process, so I'm not gonna film the whole thing. Uh, I will show you the highlights of the install and kind of the progression of it, but I will not show you the whole thing because it just it's just so much work to kind of, you know, cutting and fitting and dry fitting everything and then sealing everything at the end, which is the very last step you want to do. Uh, but I will explain that uh, kind of the, the, the tips and tricks and kind of the pitfalls of doing this. Uh, the one important thing is when you silicone your joints, you want to do that the very last thing you do. Now, dry fit everything and siliconing these joints, you want them to be fitted into a place and then let them dry as they are. That way they have the proper contours and the proper bends and they're not being like, you know, kind of manipulated in a way where it will break a seal. So that's the very last thing I have to do on my machine. Once I get everything dry fitted and plumbed up the way I like it, exactly the way I want it to sit, then you go ahead and basically undo this joint here and the same joint on the back side there for the exhaust. Silicone that up nice and you get a nice good seal that's not going to come apart. So it's probably going to take me about, you know, maybe three, four hours to do my machine. It took me longer to do this machine because it was the first machine I did and I had to do a lot of things trial and error and get certain kind of fitments and the routing of the pipes of the tubing here to fit underneath through here and through the top. And um, you also have to disconnect and relocate the starter wire. So you will have to disconnect the battery. Do not do this without disconnecting the battery completely. It, you will short out on your starter. So I had to re reposition the starter wire from about this position and I clocked it all the way up to 12 o'clock or just past it closer to one o'clock. That way it gives you clearance to run those tubes in there. You have to make room in here underneath the kind of the, the boots for the intake for the throttle body. You have to push all those wires and stuff out of the way and whatever it takes to make room. It's a kind of a, you know, a trial and error thing. It takes some time. So if you don't have patience, uh, this might not be the thing for you, but with some patience, you can get a really good looking and really highly functional snorkel system. So let's take a look at the other side because I haven't shown you that yet. Quick shots. This is what it looks like. And like I said, once I put the body panels back on, you cannot see it. So here is the intake. So I terminated it right at the end here, right near the vent in the front. So you can get a good supply of fresh air, which is important because this helps cool down your belt. Very important. Do not want to stuff this somewhere where it does not get a lot of good airflow because then you will overheat your belt. It will get hot and then it will snap and break and that's not going to be good. And right here is the exhaust. I have it dumping right to the front here underneath. There's a nice generous area there. There's no obstructions. And I just put a big zip tie to keep it in place. Now, for it to be flooded, the water has to be up past this tube. Just because this comes down doesn't mean it's going to suck in water because this is the exhaust, remember, it's going to be pushing air out. So I brought the, the high point of this just past the intake for the air box. So that's quite a bit of water to, to be in before it actually conks out on you and you get water in your PVT housing. So I'm happy with that height. Like I said, I don't want the tall, big tubes. I hate that look. I think it's ugly. 
And um, I think it's just asking for problems because you're gonna end up cutting up all sorts of stuff that you don't have to. And you still can have a lot of fun with the snorkel system you see here. So that's it from the other side, very simple. I might make this into two parts. One part is gonna be your PVT housing. And then the second part will be the install of the uh, snorkel your ATV warrior plate. So this is a part that I bought separately. I went ahead and installed it on the Polaris here and it was not easy because the center line of the air box is not to the center line of the machine. There's a, like an angle or a rotation built into the air box. So this here has to sit offset to line up with your body work. So when you put your body panels down, this here is gonna interface and if this is rotated or clocked or offset in the wrong way, according to the opening in the air box, you're going to have interference with your body panels on either side. So what you have to do is open up the actual port a little bit to the left here and then move this whole plate over offset about three eighths of an inch or so. But I will show that in the video. I'm not going to get into a detail right now. It's, um, it's a lot of work to modify this. And then of course I went ahead and siliconed it with RTV all the way around. And I extended it with these nice pieces of inch and a half vacuum tube. So that's going to be a separate video most likely because I do not want to make the first video too long. So part two will be install of the warrior plate. Now you don't have to install this warrior plate. I just did because I had it. And just in case in the future I want to extend the intake, I have it already set up. So this is really not that mandatory, but it does extend the height of the intake of the air box just a little bit, about a half inch or so. And it does help uh, with uh, not taking on water. So I went ahead and did the full snorkel system stealth kit, I'm going to call it. And uh, I'm really happy with the way it is. And I'm going to try it out pretty soon. Uh, we just got some rain, so it should be perfect out there in the trails nearby. should have a lot of water, and uh, I can't wait to get out there and try out these new snorkel systems. But I still need to do my machine and get that done. That way, uh, I don't take on any more water in my PVT housing. So I'm going to go ahead now and bring you in the workshop and show you the parts laid out and uh, what they are and kind of the details up close. All right, guys, so getting into the components of the kit, I have them all laid out here. Uh, this is something that I pieced together myself from trial and error, and this is exactly what works for the machine, and it has a nice, perfect seal, and like I said, I wanted to minimize the amount of connections because that helps with um, longevity, reliability, and uh, just simplicity of the whole design so there are less possible uh, occurrences of leaking. So with that being said, essentially the kit is an inch and a half tube for the exhaust and intake. So the key part of the kit is this coupler right here, which interfaces the threads on the tube and locks into place and is the perfect fit, perfect outside diameter for this silicone coupler here. This is a reducer. These are both the same size. They work for both intake and exhaust and they fit perfect. Now I went with silicone because it is better for higher temperatures. It's better for just overall durability and it has a slimmer design as you can see. And the, the actual silicone is reinforced with a fabric structure. So this is going to be better than anything you can find at the hardware store. This is an automotive style intercooler pipe coupler. So it's just gonna be way more durable. Anything you're gonna get at the hardware store will fatigue and, and over time will crack and uh, end up uh, fatiguing. So I would not even bother with uh, those cheap kind of rubber couplers that are super thick uh, that are gonna take up a, a whole amount of space in your, uh, on your machine. So silicone coupler is the way to go. It's a more professional finish. I have it tied in here with this nice fitting here that I found works perfect. It interfaces the threads on the tubing perfectly and it interlocks. That way you have a nice tight connection. When this is threaded on, you will not have this thing coming off on you. So that's gonna get siliconed at the very end, but 
it allows for the perfect interface between locking the tube in place and this outside diameter here is perfect for this silicone coupler so it provides a nice tight perfect seal like i said this is for the intake this will stretch and go right over the intake housing that oval shaped port and then this right here is for the exhaust so you have the same two components here plus the addition of an aluminum intercooler coupler so this is the perfect size to interface the exhaust boot um, on the pvt so you will reuse the exhaust boot as well as the factory clamp to clamp onto this and then everything else here is the aftermarket or the custom uh, pieces that i've come up with and then these little two pieces here are obviously for the intake they're four inches long and i can trim them if i want to make them shorter um, and pretty much these go on the SYA warrior plate. So that will extend the intake just a little bit. And then you can actually rotate these when they're on and positioned uh, to get a, a better fit. So having a slight curvature is nice because you can rotate this up to get a little more higher clearance uh, from taking in water. Or you can position them down to have more of a shrouded effect. So... That's kind of up to the end user what they want to do. But this kit right here, uh, I may offer on eBay for sale. So if I do post that for sale, it will be below the video and I will link it there. So if you're interested in buying this complete kit here, um, you know, it's going to be ready to go for the for most part. All you have to do is a couple uh, modifications on the plastics as you see in the video. Uh, but the benefit of buying it like this, it's pretty much ready to go. You don't have to spend time like I did and uh, figure out all the different parts needed and modify the, the actual fitting here to work with the tubes. So that's going to be offered. I think it's a great value. I'll try to price it so it's fair. Um, being on eBay, you know, I, eBay fees eat up uh, the cost of things and then I have to actually list it higher because of that reason. Uh, so because of PayPal and eBay fees, but I will try to offer this for you guys for the people that actually want it and kind of want a turnkey package for the most part with little modification. All right, so with that being said, I'm going to go ahead now and finish up the disassembly on the rear plastics of the ATV and then show the install of the tubes and uh, the couplings onto the PVT housing. All right, so moving along, I went ahead and hosed down the machine just on the inside area here so I can get all the dirt and crap off of here and work with a nice clean area. So it's drying right now. Uh, I went ahead and removed the panels. You're going to have to remove all the clips that secure the bodywork down, including the rear bodywork. So get all your clips and your side panels off. Also remove these torques which I believe are a T40. And also, I'm gonna get to go ahead and remove uh, the bolts here. So two on either side. And if you have the bumper, you're gonna have to remove the bumper, which is a kind of a pain in the ass. So all of this has to be unbolted and loose. That way I can raise the whole rear section of the ATV. So just the plastics. Once you unbolt all this stuff, you can lift up this whole thing and have access to the clips for the snorkel the snorkel has to come out through the center here out the rear it will not come out any other way uh, i had a hard time doing it on the 850 and that was the easiest way simply by raising this all the way up so you can get about five six inches on top of the frame and then you can pull that thing out and it's still tight so it will come out it's going to take some finagling and some time but just take your time and you'll be uh, just fine so Unbolt everything, lift the whole rear section up. It's going to allow you to uh, just work easier on the back side. But I have to do that. You cannot remove that snorkel any other way unless you cut it up into a bunch of small pieces, which I doubt anybody's going to do. And I don't want to do that either. So that's going to have to be the process. I'm going to go ahead now and start the first thing, cutting the plastics. So I have to make two radius cuts here for each hose and this little nub here as you can see where my finger is that holds down the ECU this rubber strap 
So I'm gonna cut that nub just flush with the rubber. This will interfere with that exhaust tube that comes up. You don't want it digging into the, uh, the, the wall of the tube. So you have to just cut that flush to make some clearance, as well as underneath here, can I try to picture this the best I can? So up in this area right here, there's a little point. This is just like a, a gusset for the body work. So cut that gusset out and make it flush so you have room here to insert that exhaust tube all the way through without biting down on this sharp point here, which will destroy that tube if you don't take care of that. So I'm going to take a little hacksaw and just cut that flush and make clearance for the tube. I hope you guys can see that. It's just like a gusset piece to reinforce the plastic. It's, it's honestly really not needed. It's there just for extra reinforcement, but it's directly underneath here. So that's going to be cleared out to make room for the tubes. And uh, that should be it for the, the PVT routing. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm not going to show every single detail about that. I kind of explained it. And um, I'm basically going to use a Dremel tool and use a carbide burr bit and uh, cut all this away slowly and then sand it down to give it a nice smooth finish. You do not want any sharp corners. You want everything kind of radiused and you want it a nice smooth finish with like 400 grit sandpaper or so. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and then I'll update you guys once I'm done with that step. Okay, so really quick, I went ahead and outlined where I have to cut away with the Sharpie. I already went ahead and trimmed back this nub here on the airbox, as well as that gusset on the bottom that's gone now. I used this mini kind of hacksaw, and then I filed it with a file. And then now it's time for the Dremel tool using carbide burrs, as you can see there. So this here, I will go ahead and hog out all the material and get it close to the Sharpie line. And then I will go ahead and blend it out into the final size with this right here, the flap wheel and the drum tool. So it helps having a Dremel tool and some various bits to, uh, to cut things out. And that should pretty much allow for clearance for everything uh, for those two tubes. Uh, and then that should be good. All right, so I did a test fit with the tubes and they fit nicely right in the relief cuts there. Uh, and there is no obstruction or restriction there. You can pull these in and out and they're not pinched or anything. I went ahead and used only these two bits. So the uh, trapezoid, inverted trapezoid carbide bit and the drum sanding roll for the Dremel tool. And obviously, mini hacksaw and files to clean things up. So that right there is done. Now I'm gonna move along to disassembling and unbolting the rear plastics and um, getting at that rear snorkel and unclamping it and pulling it straight out. So like I said, remove the bolts underneath. Uh, for me, it's gonna be more work because I have the rear bumper. Uh, I'm not too happy about that, but it has to be done in order to get that snorkel out, the factory snorkel that is. So I'm going to go ahead off camera and do all that work and then uh, give you a quick recap of that.
All right, so moving along to the next step, the very first thing you want to do is disconnect the positive lead on your battery. This is very important. Disconnect that battery because you will be messing with the starter wire and repositioning it. And you will short out if you don't disconnect the battery completely. So, start off with first removing the clip here from the bottom corner of the airbox or the intake duct. This clip here holds the wiring harness, as you can see here, in place down low. So release that clip and remove it completely. Then go ahead and reposition the starter wire, which is that really thick red wire. Now you want to position it vertically, loosen it up, reposition it and tighten it back down. And then in here, this terminal, which is the trigger for the uh, starter, bend that back just slightly, very gently push that back into place to give some clearance in this direction here because the tubing will go obviously through here and you want to have as much clearance and space as possible in this area. So just very gently push that aside, it just not a lot, just about an inch or so, push it into place as you can see here. That's all it takes. And then make sure your starter wire is, you know, tightened down and check it, physically check it with your fingers and make sure it doesn't move around. And um, if you have to clean it, that's a good time to clean it right now. Just go ahead, get a wire brush, uh, clean off the terminal, and then reassemble it and tighten it down. But once you tuck everything in, these wires here in the vent tubes are gonna wanna stay kinda in this area right here. You have to physically push them up out of the way and kinda hook them on top of the starter. As you can see here, they will fall into place once you get them past the peak of the starter and they will stay there. So you want to make clearance all in this front area, the side area here uh, for the tubing. And then once that's completed, uh, then you want to come in here and take care of this big plug wiring harness. So this lies like somewhere right here when you first take your panel off. Uh, that's another thing you want to take this panel off obviously to gain access to this area to make life a lot easier so kind of push this wiring harness up out of the way behind the tank and redirect the wire underneath to get all the way out of the way that way you have plenty of clearance right in this area here because the tubings will come through here and um, make their way up through the plastics so that's also very important tuck that out of the way make sure there's no kinks just make sure the connector is in a relaxed state. You don't want any tension on it or it bent in any weird way or any kinks in the wire. So that's nice and kind of relaxed there. This here, make sure this is relaxed as well. This stiff cable, nice smooth bend in it. And uh, there should be plenty of space here to run the, uh, the tubing and uh, go up through the top here. So I'm gonna go ahead now and start routing the tubing. And then once I'm done, I'll show you the, uh, the dry fit, what it looks like, and uh, what you should be looking for. And uh, it's pretty much very simple, and we're almost done, and we'll get to the final last stage. So moving along, we have now the intake tube in place, dry fitted, all the way up to about half inch away from the silicone coupler, which I installed. Dry, do not put any oil or silicone, uh, because it will slip off. The aluminum housing because it's tapered that inlet is tapered so uh, you do not need any lubricant because um, it is very tight and uh, you're gonna be fighting it back and forth on and off if you use lubricant so put it on dry if you have to you can stretch this out with this aluminum coupler so keep it on there overnight or heat it up with a heat gun or a hairdryer space heater will work too so you want to stretch this if it does not go on easily. Uh, I basically had one of these sitting on the coupler, and that's the one I used for this. Uh, it made a perfect fit. I, you know, it does take some uh, elbow grease to get it on there because it's nice and tight, but that's a good thing. So that's in place. I dry fitted the intake tube first. You want it to go kind of down and behind the gas tank and then come back up. As you can see there, it kind of makes a couple bends. And then it comes up here and you want to leave the excess for right now. So don't trim it. 
we'll do that at the very end. So also, as you can see here, I took out the exhaust boot because it's just easier to assemble this with the exhaust boot off the machine versus trying to shove this on there while it's inside the machine. So go ahead and remove the thing and clean out both sides really good with a rag. Make sure there's no debris in there. And you're going to utilize the factory clamp on the boot, insert the coupler, and then have the silicone coupling with the two clamps just like this. You want this one facing towards the front of the machine, as you can see there, the tightening nut, and then the tightening nut on the smaller clamp facing towards the back of the machine because you'll have better access uh, from the back side in that position. So the orientation of these clamps are kind of critical for you to you know, service this later on. Otherwise, you'll have a really hard time trying to take this thing apart uh, later down the road. So you want to make sure you have these in a proper orientation. That way your life will be easier. Uh, like I said, these are facing forward and the small clamp is facing back. And you will have to adjust the, uh, the orientation as needed once you install it on the machine, obviously. So the next step will be to go ahead and dry fit the exhaust vent or tube and uh, route that behind and up and over the intake. So I'll, I'll go ahead and do that off camera and then I'll come back and show you guys what it looks like. All right, so I'll show you the progress so far. I have the exhaust vent tube all routed and dry fitted. And uh, I had to do some figuring here with the intake. I went up and installed the adapter into the coupling. And because the XP1000 is a, you know, an electronic throttle, so it has, you know, a drive by wire, which is different from the 850, the end cap on the throttle body is different. So let me show you what it looks like from this side. It's a little bit easier to see. So as you can see there, the throttle body end cap, the butterfly valve motor itself, it's different. On here, on the 850, we have a cable driven, as you can see there. So it's a slightly different setup. There's a little more clearance with this to kind of bend in and have a more smoother contour and bend with the intake vent tube. So there is slight variation on the XP1000. You have a, a little more confinement when it comes to um, less space available, I should say. So this throttle body here sticks out further out. So the bend has to be more precise. And what has to happen is the silicone coupler has to be trimmed back a half inch on the larger side. So I went ahead and trimmed off a half inch off a silicone coupler with a brand new razor blade, nice virgin razor blade, cut right through that really well. I kind of set my height with a, with a block and then I rested the razor blade on top and then I would score it as I was spinning the silicone coupler on a flat surface. It would cut into the actual coupler and then as I went around and around it, it, it scored deeper and deeper until the final point where I started to break loose and then you could pry it apart and clean it up so that's how you cut that without you know making it look like a complete mess nice clean edge but for the XP 1000 you have to trim back that a half inch because of the drive-by wire throttle so as you can see there it still fits in there nice you have to push in that adapter all the way in and then cinch it down with the clamp. The back end here is all tied up. I did a, just a dry fit with the adapter to get my length for the tubing. So all my tubing is kind of routed. As you can see there, the exhaust on this one goes up over the intake, but the opposite has to be done for the 850. The intake goes up and over the exhaust and the exhaust runs underneath the intake tube on this side here. So two different routings because of that, you know, extra space here on the 850, you have a little more play, but the XP1000 is a little tighter situation. So you have to make do and kind of finagle the, the tubes around and manipulate them so they fit without rubbing, without kinking, without any damage to the to the vent tubes themselves 
eventually it's probably a good idea to come and check your tubes uh, a year or two later down the line make sure there's no holes in them or they're rubbing through in any spots because they are touching in a lot of areas so it's you know wear and tear is bound to happen so that's something to keep in mind you want to check your tubes uh, further down the line all right so the next step will be to finally go ahead and apply silicone to those adapters and where it meets the threaded tube on both the intake and the exhaust and then set them into place clamp them down just like you see here and then I will go ahead and wipe clean the seal to make sure uh, it is nice and, and even all the way around with my finger and uh, let me go ahead and do that get everything kind of fitted up with the silicone RTV I'll show you how I'm doing it what I'm using and then the final step will be to trim the tubes to final length all right guys so gonna do a final recap on the whole install uh, the XP 1000 was slightly different than the the 850 uh, in relation to the silicone couple that had to be trimmed back a half inch but everything pretty much is the same I went ahead and routed the exhaust tube um, under the intake right there and then it comes back over because it just uh, if it's better and it's less of a bulge and the, and the tube is straighter and more kink free uh, which is exactly the same way I did on the 850 so I went ahead and switched that around because I think that's gonna be better overall uh, there's no tubing touching this sharp point right here in the corner so beware of that if you run the tube the other way around like the originally like the way I had it it runs across this kind of sharp corner here in the plastic and the and the floorboard uh, which is not good so to prevent any damage and wear uh, you just kind of need to kind of manipulate the the tube and kind of figure out a way that works without um, any you know excessive wear or damage on the tubing uh, but with that being said you do want to check your tubing every so often when you have your plastics off uh, you know things are touching it's not the most perfect fit but it actually is really really good um, given that this machine is not designed to have a snorkel on it so the XP 1000 and the 850 are great candidates for this snorkel kit because the fuel tank is relocated lower and it's not up here like you usually see on a Polaris or other ATVs if you have a gas tank up here you're shit out of luck because you're not gonna have all this room here this real estate to run the tubes like you you see it here so as you can see I went ahead and finished up the snorkel plate that's gonna be in a separate video so check that out that will be part two but you know I'm really happy with the fitment I'm really happy I got it past this area right here because that throttle body end cap or motor is uh, is a little more uh, protruding on the XP 1000 than it is the 850 and that's because of the drive-by wire system one thing I also want to touch on is the preparation of the tubing before you apply the silicone now you want to scuff up about an inch and a half of the of the actual area that's inserted into that threaded coupling for each one of the intake and exhaust so the piece that's in here inside the silicone coupler that black piece you want to scuff up the inside of it with a stainless steel wire brush make sure the surface is textured and then same thing for the hose itself scuff up the outside of the hose uh, to the point where it's nice and gray and kind of textury that way the silicone RTV will stick better to it so once you have those surfaces prepped clean them with some compressed air alcohol hit them again with some compressed air uh, to make sure there's no dust and debris on them from the paper or rag they're using and then go ahead apply the silicone RTV sealant after you apply the silicone adhesive all the way around the tubing uh, you can thread on the adapter and then you want to kind of screw it on a couple turns and then back it off a couple turns that way it applies the silicone sealant all the way around the threads and you make sure you have good coverage uh, you want to bottom out the adapter when you when you screw it on and uh, you do not want to over torque it you just want to tighten it with your fingers uh, and that's it you do not want to tighten it too much because then it will, it will actually uh, distort the tube itself uh, and then you want to assemble it when it's wet very important do this immediately 
after you prep it, apply the silicone, assemble it just the way you ha I have it here, and you want to let it sit after that. You do not want to touch it. Do not touch the tubes. That's why it's the very last step because you want to have it laying in the in the free state that it will be uh, positioned in for it, the rest of its life, basically. Uh, and you do not want to manipulate that seal. If you start manipulating the seal and manipulating the tubing, trying to fit the tubes better, you're going to end up breaking the seal here, and then you're going to have a compromised seal. The whole point is to have a nice, perfect seal, which means lay in your, your tubing and your adapter, and then go ahead and apply even more silicone all the way around, and then with your finger, squeeze out and kind of radius uh, the intersection point of the tubing and the uh, the adapter itself. So apply more silicone and spread it all the way around the actual junction there. Now, if you ever go to take this apart, you will have to replace that silicone. This is a one-time use seal. Uh, not the coupler, I'm talking about the silicone RTV sealant that's on the tube and between the adapter. So. If you ever take it apart, very important, redo that whole connection, redo that whole seal. You're going to have to clean it all over again and apply new RTV silicone. That is only good for one-time use. I cannot stress that. A lot of people start messing around their machine, taking apart their snorkels, and not uh, re-siliconing everything properly. And then guess what? They take on water and they blow the machine up. Okay? You want to make sure you have a good, perfect seal, and the only way to do that is to not compromise it whatsoever. And if you uh, ever take it apart, start from scratch. You gotta clean it and apply brand new stuff. So, so let's go take a look on the other side of the machine. Show you what I did. The exhaust dumps right in this area right here. You want to trim it back so you give this area enough room. For the exhaust to dump you don't want to have it like butting up against something you want to have it in free space and pretty much trim back the tube until you get a good generous amount of space in front of the tubing here for the exhaust where it's not going to be constricted in any way the intake i trim back a little bit to get past these clips here in the tab otherwise you're going to have a problem fitting your side plastic in your side panel so trim this back so it basically gets fresh cold air from this vent right here it's perfect so one thing to consider is that these are inch and a half tubing yes it's smaller than factory factory is about like two inches if you if you count this like the actual surface area cross section um, but the thing is it's not that much smaller uh, so what happens is you're gonna have more velocity of air versus more you know quantity of air available so it's going to make up for the reduction in size by having more air velocity through the tubing, which is should be sufficient, especially if you're getting cold, fresh air from the front here. Very important. You don't want to be intaking hot air somewhere, hot air off the motor. This is going to get a fresh stream of cold air, and it's going to exhaust that hot air down below here into the fender. So very important. That's part of the cooling system for the belt. Uh, the belt will heat up if you do not cool it properly. Yeah, believe it or not, it, there is a built-in fan in the housing in the pulley system to actually promote cooling. Uh, it's a secondary function. Primary function, obviously, is to drive the machine. It's a you know part of the transmission. It's the clutch. Uh, but very important that you keep that fan operating efficiently by making sure you have cold air getting into it so moving along I think I covered everything um, I just went ahead and retightened everything make sure everything was nice and snug by hand uh, you don't want to over wrench this and um, pretty much uh, you know it's a professional install I'm really happy with the way it came out using the silicone couplings is a higher quality coupling more flexible more durable and it just looks better and it's going to give you better, you know, service life. So, I went ahead also, let me cover uh, some places where you want to zip tie. So, I used a Velcro strap here. Uh, that's not going to be included. I just had this laying around, so I'm using a Velcro because that's easily allowed me to take this off and on. Uh, but, I plan on getting some more Velcro for my own machine. But, you can use zip ties. 
most likely I'll include that with the kit. So zip tie here, right where it's zip tied on the frame. So zip tying everything at the place is going to help the tube, you know, not bounce around and um, not chafe on any metal or other tubing or wires or anything. So very important. You want to keep everything nice and tight. And then over here, I just put one zip tie around the rubber strap that goes uh, around the ECU. I noticed that uh, this machine here, being a 2018, does not have like an EVAP system or EVAP purge solenoid like this one does here. This has got like some kind of solenoid for emissions. Very interesting. So didn't know that was on the machine until I started looking at it. I was like, wait a second, something's missing, but... I guess uh, for 2020, they do something different. There's some kind of emissions or it must be some kind of EVAP, uh, you know, purge. But anyways, that's the PVT housing kit. Uh, I will offer this for sale on eBay. I will post a link down below. Uh, you have to basically, obviously, do the install yourself. It's, it takes a lot of time. And I highly recommend taking the rear end of the machine off. And lifting it up like I did because it makes life a lot easier. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to get that snorkel out. So, I really hope you guys enjoy this video. And if you have any questions or comments, please place them right down below. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel already, please go ahead and do so. I want to thank you guys for watching. And I'll see you on the next video.